Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we will talk about Russia putting emphasis on blockchain technology to not fall behind. And we'll show you a quick, small uh, sneak peek to what we are currently working on. All right, uh, let's get right into this first news story. Uh, without mentioning blockchain, Putin says that Russia must stay ahead in technology. So um, there was a meeting between Hermann Greff, the president of L R Russia's largest bank, the Sparebank, and um, Vladimir Putin. And um, they have discussed uh, behind, like uh, next to other topics, of course, they have discussed the importance of blockchain technology. Now, um, Greff addressed Putin directly, speaking about what he sees as the need for programs for training professionals in blockchains due to the sheer size of the industry worldwide. Greff also spoke of a, of a need for very careful regulation and not prohibitions in order to promote innovation. Now, what he's talking about here are two things. So on one side, there is a huge demand for blockchain focused developers and people who really understand blockchain. Um, and here he is saying that Russia is, has actually a very good base to train all those people and um, actually supply the, 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 the demand that's currently going on in the industry. But he's also saying that regulation, yes, but be very careful about it because you don't want to scare people away. For example, he is um, also the bank, the, the spare bank is uh, saying that the bank is also reportedly soon opening a cryptocurrency exchange in Switzerland. So this is interesting. Why, why are not, are they? not opening it up in uh, Russia could be because um, that uh, because of crypto valley in Zug and the better or easier laws there and regulation there um, then the, basically the discussion goes on and Vladimir Putin actually says well um, the stone age did not end due to the lack of stones but because uh, new technologies appeared so um, he's kind of saying that um, it is important for Russia to stay up to date with these technologies and to stay actually within um, understanding of what goes on around the world. Because, yeah, if they are, I mean, it's one of the world's superpowers. And if they are not um, up to date with the newest trends and topics regarding blockchain, they could potentially fall behind. Um, he's also saying will very quickly fall under the dependence of the leaders of the development. So he's saying uh, we would rather be part of the leadership than be uh, dependent on, on other um, people. And what is interesting here is also that, for example, Vladimir Putin had a meeting with Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin um, in January, where they also discussed the um, launch of a multinational cryptocurrency to be adopted by BRICS and EEU uh, countries to take advantage of blockchain and smart contracts. So what I really like here is, I mean, obviously, if this is true, um, but I mean, the meeting ha has uh, appeared, but what they've exactly discussed and what was the topic and especially the importance importance of the meeting. If this is true, then this is great because Vladimir Putin is going towards understanding um, how the technology works by discussing and talking to, to the co-founders of actually one of the, the most important cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrency platforms, um, Ethereum mainly. And this is super important. I mean, versus think about maybe maybe even the, the example of Venezuela where um, they have uh, said for example that they will launch an ERC20 token but then they switch to NEM um, there are rumors that the numbers that they have raised uh, money in are, is not really true and all of these things and I would rather see countries and states take a bit of a small approach here and um, uh, like a slower approach here rather and really understand the technology before launching something or before trying to regulate or over regulate something and this is also what what Hermann Greff is saying he's saying well I mean we have to be careful scaring away companies or innovators or entrepreneurs um, that could potentially help us here this this is a huge risk because then they will move to other countries such as Switzerland, such as the US, such as maybe uh, Singapore, and they will build those companies there. And um, building those companies there not only means lost tax money, but it also means that they will lose um, the, the the potential to become kind of a hub or of um, developers, entrepreneurs, and innovators in general, which in turn could help the entire economy if this industry keeps on growing the, the way it, it it will and it does. So it's extremely important 
that um, states stay in, co in current uh, contact with uh, the developers of these big cryptocurrencies, be it Ethereum, be it Bitcoin, Litecoin, all of these things. And I, I really like um, what I'm seeing here. Hopefully this, this will not um, uh, result in just Russia launching the crypto ruble because, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure whether a centralized cryptocurrencies um, will be uh, helpful in any way. I would rather see something like um, maybe a partnership with Ethereum or maybe um, kind of a, a cooperation with, with, with the project where uh, Russia could benefit as much as Ethereum could benefit from Russia. And this is really, uh, this will be an, a very interesting topic in the coming months, if not years. So you will see more and more states and governments talk about cryptocurrencies and talk about how they will implement blockchain on um, their site. So this will definitely stay interesting um, the next few days, weeks and months. Now, next up, I want to give you a quick sneak peek to something we're doing. Um, we are building a kind of a, I want to say database where we categorize the different uh, cryptocurrencies. So obviously, if you go to CoinMarketCap, you the the main uh, thing you see is um, the, the the market capitalization. So depending on the market capitalization and then the price, you judge certain cryptocurrencies. And we think the approach has to change, especially if you're an investor who wants to um, invest long term into different cryptocurrencies and platforms and has different investment thesis, um, like uh, we've discussed with these different type of portfolios. And if you're really uh, wanting to build a platform focused or a privacy focused portfolio, you have to understand what exactly these tokens are, whether they are a token, whether they are a platform, whether they are uh, an asset and all of these things. And this is something we're building. We're also looking into the consensus protocol and this I think we'll also look into when we uh, do basically review and research of uh, all the top 50 or top 100 coins that will pr start pretty soon. So um, stay on the lookout for this. We'll share this as soon as it is, as it's more or less complete. I would say as soon as we have the top 50 here, um, we will start sharing uh, this sheet and uh, make this available for you guys as well. If you really want to um, stay, uh, I want to say up to date here and um, want to be one of the first people who, who gets this sheet as soon as we're done, make sure to um, sign up here at bluealpineresearch.com slash free minus report and then you will be one of the first to additionally to actually getting a free uh, research paper on one of the uh, in more interesting cryptocurrencies that we've done. And then you will definitely get this um, sheet as soon as it's available. And with that, I'm already at the end of today's episode. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see each other tomorrow. Take care.